Welcome to Ultimate Survival Gear. Today, as you guys can see, again, I have a mystery box from Amazon. No idea what's inside. <laughs> well, let's open up and find out because these are actually very, very popular. Vibram V-Track hiking shoes. Yes, these are advertised as hiking shoes. So I am actually very excited to do this review uh, because as some of you already know, this is not just a regular review, this review is specifically for my ultimate survival boots section. Yes, and uh, I introduced this type of shoes, the bare type of kind of barefoot minimalist type of shoes, specifically for a reason on this channel. It's because I myself am looking for something very small, very compact, very lightweight um, to carry in my survival bag whenever I go on my hikes, whenever I go on my adventures, right? So the idea behind this is that you are traveling by foot, of course, um, in your whatever boots you pick, whatever is your favorite hiking boots, rival boot, tactical boot, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, and then you get to the point where now you need to, well, let's see, cross the river, for example, or climb up a mountain or some kind of structure or a tree, or maybe you need to do a quick scoop of the area and do a quick run. Um, you put down your backpack, you take out your minimalist shoes, you put them on and then you go, right? Then you come back, you change it or whatever, or you, you cross the river and then you change it back to your dry normal shoes and then continue going, right? This is what I am pretty much looking for. So I'm excited. Hopefully I will have good things to say about. Let's find out, right? So how do we make the judgment? We make the judgment based on eight different criteria. Let the review begin. Criteria number one, comfort level. And in order to test the comfort level, I do the run and then a walk. Uh, I do a three mile run and then a five mile walk, non-stop. So eight miles, non-stop. And then I continue wearing the shoes for the rest of the day. Total wear time, it is eight hours. Okay, so overall, I do like the comfort level of these shoes. Let's start from the very first factor basically that contributes to the comfort level. The first one is the weight, of course. Now this is size 10, and size 10, let me tell you exactly how heavy or light size 10 is. 6.9. Now, these are not the lightest Vibram shoes, they are much lighter, but overall, it's a very, very good weight, very, very lightweight. Um, usually I say that, you know, if you're looking for good boots, good shoes, lightweight, you're looking for something under 20 ounces. The more under 20 ounces, the lighter it is. And obviously this is very, very light. I would be very comfortable running in these, climbing in these, um, crossing the river in this, because they're so, they're really, really light. And I mean, carrying in your backpack, these, you know, double the weight, about 15, 16 ounces, not a big deal, pretty good, okay? Um, there is, as you can see, it's sort of mid-size, kind of, right? So you do have that part wrapping around um, your ankles and it does feel fairly soft. There isn't much padding, but it does feel pretty good. There is some decent padding on the tongue, surprisingly, not like any other Vibram shoe. And throughout the whole shoe, it actually does feel very nice. This material is very comfortable. The um, inner sole right here, as you can see, it actually is fit way better, way better than a lot of other Vibram shoes out there. It's, it's fairly comfortable. Um, and the, the outsole is very, I mean, super duper flexible. So you can run properly without any problems. Now let's get into the little factor that I'm not a fan of here whenever it comes to the shoe. It is these fingers right here. I do not like how they feel, how these fingers feel on my foot. They are, besides being hard to put your you know, to put the shoe on, they also create, personally for me, create a kind of a weird feeling. I wish it was a regular, just, just regular toe box personally, but it, it, again, it's a personal preference. You might like it, you never know. Uh, but overall, I do like the comfort level of the shoes. I would say of all the Vibram shoes so far that I reviewed on this channel, these are my favorite comfort wise. Let's move on to the criteria number two, proofing and protection. Now proofing wise, <laughs> obviously don't expect any protection here uh, on the top of your toes, although you do have more or less of protection going around. So if you're walking on a rocky road, and you kind of crash, which happened to me a lot, this part of the toe, at least you have a little bit of protection from the outsole. So overall, pretty good. 
um, very useful, especially if you're crossing the river, for example, and you don't know how the bottom of the river looks, this gives you that protection. Pretty good. Obviously, the outsole is pretty decent as well. Um, it, it has decent amount of protection, way better, even though it is still very thin, don't get me wrong, but it's still way better than pretty much all the other Vibram shoes that I reviewed on this uh, channel. Uh, also, because this is sort of a, a little bit extended, almost kind of like a mid-size, right? Minimalist shoe, which honestly, this is what I'm looking for. I am looking for a mid-size minimalist shoe. You, you can see here that uh, you have a little bit of tiny protection on the ankles. Pretty good. Heel, not much, okay, not big deal. And uh, let's move on to the proofing, right? Now, proofing wise, these are not waterproof and I don't care. It's, I, I don't need waterproof minimalist shoes. The whole idea is, that you will get them completely wet, but because they're so small, so minimalist, they will dry up very quickly, right? So no big deal, that, that's perfect for me. Uh, but let's move on to the criteria number three, quality and design features. Now, quality-wise, over 1,000 reviews on Amazon, so people do like these shoes overall, almost five stars, yes, yes. Amazon link is in the description below, by the way. Now, design features, here is my main problem with these shoes. Now, it, it, it might not be a problem for you, but it is definitely a problem for me. The lacing system. I don't understand it. I, I mean, I don't know what Vibram was thinking here. First of all, what is the point of this long of uh, strings? What I, I mean, seriously, you, you, you can cut it probably in half. You can probably cut it more than half and still have way more than enough a string. This is a freaking paracord, not a string. I, I, I really don't get it. It's, it's too thick, in my opinion. It's not very, it doesn't slide through this fabric hooks that they used, which don't use, don't look reliable at all. I mean, at all. I don't know how long this will last, but this, this fabric hooks, they don't look reliable to me at all, especially considering the overall design. Uh, the minimalist shoe, because it's gonna be so tight, wrapped around your foot, uh, this is, you know, I, I, I really don't have a lot of trust for this lacing system. And I'm not a big fan of the, la the strings themselves. They're too long, they're too thick. They don't feel good, they, they feel very, very cheap. Uh, honestly, I would love to see a quick lace system on these. I don't know why Vi Vibram did not just do a quick lace on these. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not a fan of this. You might like it. You might be okay with it, but I am not okay with it. And, and then also the finger grooves, again, design feature-wise. I don't like the fingers at all. They, they take forever to put this on because your finger goes here and then here and then here. And by the time it gets to the right spot, you've been in every freaking thing and now you have the second finger to worry about. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> maybe I'm just not used to that, but not a fan. Not a huge deal. Again, it can be the personal preference. So keep that in mind. Let's move on to the criteria number four now, outsole, traction and stability. So, Whenever I do my run and my walk, I do it on a variety of different surfaces, starting with older asphalt, then the newer tarmac, then the dry sand, then the wet sand, dry grass, wet grass, rocky road, trail surface, concrete, uh, rubber, marble tile, and then the rock wall in my house. I think I involve, included everything. Hopefully I did. Uh, but, but, this outsole, like I said, is the best of all the Vibram shoes that I reviewed on the shelf, by far. First of all, it gives you a decent amount of protection. And second, most importantly, it has excellent balance between aggression and flatness. Now, I wish there was a little bit more aggressive ridges here for climbing, okay? I think that's a huge miss on Vibram's side. I, I mean, they have it here, they have all the space. What happened? Why did you left this out? Like, look at this, this is all flat. Why? It's perfect opportunity to implement some good, good ridges, either going like this or like this, and it, it will, it will just add uh, as a grip for your climbing. Everything else is great though. Look at these, look at this. This is the best kind of aggression that you can find on your fingers. This is phenomenal. I freaking love it. Um, it's not, it's not stupid aggressive, okay? Something where the sand gonna get stuck or rocks gonna get stuck. It's not like that. It, 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 it's perfect in my opinion. The only thing that I'm not a fan of is these little grooves. I don't think they are necessary. I would rather have something more of a, more of a complete design, something bigger going around. Why? Because whenever you 
create this little tiny grooves like this, right? I'll try to focus it on a, this. They become way too flexible, right? You see how it's way, way too soft because it is so small. These big ones, they're not soft at all. You can't move them, but these ones are. And this softness, it creates instability, uh, especially whenever you're running. It's very noticeable whenever you're running. You get that wobbly type of feel. So. I really hope to see the 2.0 version of the shoe. Honestly, I really, really wish without the fingers, but okay, fine. If you want to do fingers, fine, do the fingers. But without this freaking lacing system, for sure, use the quick lace, please, Vibram. And then a little bit of upgraded, updated outsole, because this has huge potential to me personally, uh, but I think it could be much, much better. Let's move on to the criteria number uh, five real quickly. Temperature, I'm not gonna talk about winter, cold, makes no sense. This has nothing to do with any of that. Uh, hot temperatures, I would say this is probably the best material so far of all the Vibram shoes that I reviewed on this channel. Uh, the most breathable, the most light, and the most comfortable to the touch because Keep in mind, you're gonna wear these without the socks. So your skin is gonna touch this material and this this these, this shoe by far feels the best, okay? Uh, let's move on to the criteria number six really quickly, the sizing. Now sizing whenever it comes to Vibram shoes is a little bit weird. It's a, it's a double sizing that they sell. So if your size is nine and a half, get the nine and a half slash 10. This is what I did, this is my size and that worked for me. Let's move on to the criteria number seven, balance of application. So if this really was that type of shoe that you kept in your backpack, or maybe you chose it as your main survival shoe. You never know. Would this be good? Um, of all the shoes like this, barefoot, minimalist shoes that I reviewed on this channel, this is by far my favorite one so far. Even considering this crap, even considering this crap, even considering this little freaking meh. But still, by far, this is my favorite one because of the mid-size, this is very smart because overall outsole is phenomenal and this is light and, and exactly pretty much what I'm looking for. Just a little changes and it would be perfect. But let's move on to the criteria number eight, the price, $120. And that really makes me exhale, $120. I mean, Vibram, come on guys, $120 for what? For what? I really don't get it. You know, for $120, let me give you an example. You can buy yourself uh, a Salomon Ultra X3 GTX, okay? Or, or X Salomon 3 Ultra X, whatever this. Like, I don't even remember the freaking, this is my favorite boot of all and I don't remember the correct, there's so much stuff in the name. Um, but it's a GTX waterproof proof shoe so gtx technology on itself is like 50 bucks it's an expensive waterproofing technology it's lightweight it has unbelievably amazing outsole one of the best outsoles out there one of the best comfort levels uh great lacing system uh great protection everything all around and it's much more of a shoe obviously as you can imagine because it's a hiking boot it's a mid-size hiking boot uh, much more materials um, and work put into it and it is about 120, 130 dollars. You can find it now. This for 120 dollars for the same price. I don't know, guys. I really find it hard to justify. Now, don't get me wrong. This is really good shoe, but 120 dollars it just takes away. It takes away a lot, in my opinion from the shoe. So unless you're a fan of Vibram, unless you're a huge fan of these fingers, you probably wanna look around a little bit more, you know, especially if you're looking specifically for some trail running shoes, for hiking shoes. Trust me guys, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of hiking shoes and trail running shoes out there, way better for that price, way better than this. To me, I'm looking specifically for minimalist shoes. That's why it's kind of an option, but still, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough choice because of the price. So let me know in the comments below, guys, what do you think about the shoe? What do you think about this review? If you have any requests, drop them in the comments below and I will try to address them. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. This was Ultimate Survival Gear. I'll see you guys in the next video.